guys, welcome back to my channel, Mermaid Nina here. Well, in tonight's video, we're going to talk about Hollywood Studios. We are back into my new series where I'm actually going to walk you guys through the map, kind of like a virtual tour of the map. So even though I have lots of videos out there for you guys, itinerary videos, game plan videos for both general families and those kiddos, I have lots of vlog footage, I have tons of tips and tricks for you guys, uh, I still get questions, and I think what you guys really are looking for is you just want to know what's in the park. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about what exactly is in the park on the current map. So we're going to talk about rides. We're going to do a ride-by-ride -ride guide with some informative information to help you guys out. You know, is it family-friendly? Is it a coaster? Is it going to cause motion sickness? We're going to talk about dining especially the bigger dining, the larger dining, and we're gonna talk about some of the shops. So basically, I'm, I'm going through the map. So I'm gonna pop up pictures as we go. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I have already done Magic Kingdom and Epcot. Tonight, obviously, is Hollywood Studios, and then up next will be Animal Kingdom. So get out that pen and paper and start taking notes because if you wanna know what exactly is in the park, if you're wondering, you know, is Hollywood Studios the park for me? Is Hollywood Studios the park for my family? Hopefully by the end of this video, you will have determined your answer. But you guys ready? Let's get started. First thing to note here is Hollywood Studios has eight lands or areas. Now some of these lands and areas are very themed and very specific and some of them, they're just kind of put in a little nook and cranny in the map, kind of know that going into it. And again, I'm gonna pop up images of the map to help you guys out. So let's discuss that and break it down. So we're gonna start with the front of the park, right? So we're coming through the main entrance. We're gonna talk about that area first. So that general area straight down the center of Hollywood Boulevard is known as Hollywood Boulevard, that's right. Um, basically, you're just walking straight into the park. In fact, the first thing you're gonna see is the Chinese theater. That's kind of like the iconic thing here at a Hollywood Studios. And that is actually where the one and only ride is for Hollywood Boulevard, and that is Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Now, this is a new ride, also inspired by my ears here. Um, it's the only ride throughout Disney, right, that features Mickey Mouse, right? So you gotta ride it. You're basically riding a train as it gets a little goofy. There's a little hint there for you. And it kind of strays around away from the tracks. It is 100% family friendly. You are on a trackless system. So there are some times where it kind of does like a quick little turn. Nothing too crazy. Just note that it's a... Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good ride if you have motion issues, you know, just kind of close your eyes, but really it hasn't been an issue for me. I would definitely call this a must do ride. It's one of their newest rides and it's pretty cool. So next thing up is we're gonna talk about the eats. Now there's three uh, kind of restaurants here to notate. The first one is gonna be the Hollywood Brown Derby. Now this is a super duper nice restaurant. In fact, now that the meal plan is coming back, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that it used to be a two, credit meal. It is a table service meal. It does require reservations. Check out that menu because it's pretty yummy. You know, they're known for their Cobb salad and I think they have a big burger everyone's always talking about. So yeah, that's going to be Hollywood Brown Derby. Next up, we're going to just talk about the Brown Derby Lounge, right? This is actually a walk-up, quick service, kind of mobile dining area here. It is mostly drinks, although you can get a few of the, you know, famous eats that are served at the Brown Derby in the lounge, again, check out that menu. The third item here is the Trolley Car Cafe. Now parents, no tape. Starbucks, that's right. Trolley Car Cafe is code for Starbucks. In fact, as soon as you walk down Hollywood Boulevard, it's gonna be right there on the right-hand side, Starbucks, AKA coffee, AKA everyone's favorite fix, right? Next up here is we got a lot of shops. I'm not really gonna name them all because they're not really, it's your general kind of gift shop, right? Your Disney souvenirs. Now the interesting th thing here at Hollywood is rather than having one big main store that you're gonna get all of your general kind of souvenirs at, 
it's like a series of stores connected together. So you literally can just walk through one and keep walking through them all and checking them out. So one might have more housewares and one might have fancier items and one might be more, you know, plushies. One might currently be more Star Wars based. I mean, they kind of change them and switch them up. We like to just walk straight through the gift shops and then kind of shop as we go, right? So I did pop up a few of the names here. Uh, but those are basically, you know, the shops here in Hollywood Boulevard. They do have a giant pin trading store right there at the main entrance as well. But if we keep going now, so we're facing the Chinese theater. We're going to go left, not because I like to go left at this park, because that's what the map is telling you in order of what the map here. So we're going to go left and that's going to take us to Echo lake that is the area kind of surrounding the lake here you're going to pass a giant dinosaur yep her name is gertie uh, this gets you kind of towards the indiana jones area so we're kind of just taking a little turn here to the left hollywood studios isn't a complete circle it's kind of a weird circle over concoction situation but we are in terms of the map going to take like a big circle so we're going left and we're going to finish up right with the complete circle if that kind of helps you guys out so here at echo lake we do have quite a few attractions and rides so let's hop to it first one is going to be indiana jones epic stunt spectacular yes absolutely love this show it is a 30 minute stunt show with live performers basically doing the stunts that are in the Indiana Jones movies. And they do kind of talk to you about how they do these stunts. Absolutely love this show, family friendly, great for kids, totally awesome if you're interested in the movies, how they make movies, and if you're interested in Indiana Jones. But you know, like who's not? Who doesn't like Indiana Jones? Let me know in the comments if you don't like Indiana Jones. But next thing up is gonna be Star Tours. Now Star Tours, is an oldie but goodie and uh if you haven't seen that video they're gonna update star tours for 2024 so that's pretty cool star tours the adventure continues is uh, a, a simulated flight ride here you are gonna need a uh, 3d glasses but there is a height here so kiddos need to be that 40 inches so essentially without giving it away you're gonna go into this flight simulator and you're in Star Wars, like they are dodging and doing things, right? Like you're in Star Wars. So definitely a lot of motion here. Um, I've ridden Star Tours a lot growing up as a kid. It's not something I can ride anymore. So I do caution people who maybe were drinking too much, uh, people who had a little too much sun and maybe not enough fluids. Uh, I do see a lot of uh, people that kind of pass out or get sick on this ride, unfortunately. Usually it's kind of people a little bit older, you know, my age or higher, uh, but just kind of note that it, it can cause quite a bit of motion if you aren't prepared for it. So that is Star Tours. Absolutely love this ride. My kids will go on this ride over and over again because each time you go, you get a little different flight uh, simulation there. So pretty cool. Uh, next thing on the list, not a ride, but... You get to meet Olaf, that's right, at Celebrity Spotlight. You can go ahead and meet Olaf. Next thing up is something called Vacation Fun. Now, I'll be honest, I've done this one time, and it's not something I have to keep doing, uh, but it's an animated short with Mick and Min. So basically, you're going in a theater and you're watching a movie. This is perfect for kiddos who are tired, exhausted. You need to take a break. They need a little screen time to just gather themselves. Great to do as a time killer. Perhaps you're killing time between your next Genie Plus or dining reservation. And of course, if it's too hot out or if it's raining, yeah, air conditioning. Uh, this is over here right before Star Tours. Just so you know, it's not really like bam in your face. It's kind of like in a nook and cranny. You have to look for it. Next thing up here is the Frozen Sing Along Celebration. Absolutely love this show. This is a live performance show with some really funny cast members, but you're also singing along to Frozen. So if you don't like Frozen, maybe skip it, but really parents alike, kiddos alike, family friendly, absolutely love this experience. It's funny, it's silly, you get to sing, um, but yeah, all those other great things, you know, air conditioning, time killer, family friendly. Yeah, absolutely love the Frozen sing along. I'll let you know if you do it during the holiday season. 
you might get a special guest star for that show. But that's it for the rides and attractions at Echo Lake. Next thing up are the eats. Now, first thing here is Hollywood and Vine. Absolutely love Hollywood and Vine. That is going to be the character meal over at Hollywood Studios. Now, it is a bit different because it's a breakfast, lunch, and dinner restaurant, but breakfast is completely different from lunch and dinner. So breakfast, you're going to be dining with Disney Junior characters. Lunch and dinner, we've got Minnie, Daisy, Donald, sometimes Mickey, and they, they seasonally change their outfits. So Halloween time, they're gonna be in a different outfit than in the springtime, if that makes sense. So if you want Disney Junior, you gotta do the breakfast. If you want Mick and Min and those classic characters, you wanna do lunch and dinner, but that's Hollywood and Vine. I think they're back to buffet. Don't quote me on that, check it in the app, but yes, it's, it's a character meal. Next thing up is 50's Primetime Cafe. This is gonna get you that Americana classic eatery, you know, meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Uh, just be careful here. Um, you don't wanna put your elbows on the table. Depending on your weight staff, when you dine, they might get a little motherly on you and yell at you for you know putting your elbows on the table and not finishing your peas, so please be careful. But it's all in good fun over at 50's Primetime Cafe. The next thing up here is the Tune In Lounge. So I said lounge, that's code for cocktails, wine, beer, and more. Next up, we have Epic Eats. Now that's gonna be funnel cakes, soft serve ice cream beverages, and this is gonna be located near Indiana Jones. It's one of those like little cart things. It's not like a full on restaurant. Then we have the Backlot Express. Now this is a quick service location, you know, so you can sit down, you order. Um, just consider it like American barbecue, burgers, chicken strips for those kiddos who are always looking for those chicken tenders. They're also known for that Wookie cookie, right? It's an oatmeal cookie with like a creamy icing in the center. Yeah, don't forget to get the Wookie cookie. Next thing up is Dock Side Diner. Now they are known for hot dogs. So many crazy types of hot dogs, mac and cheese hot dogs, uh, bacon, lettuce, tomato hot dogs, pretzel hot dogs, and of course, drinks. Uh, last thing here is a dinosaur Gertie, right? Remember I said the dinosaur's name was Gertie. Well, she has an ice cream uh, cart area here for your frozen treats. Now, shopping isn't really huge in Echo Lake. All you really got is, you know, the Star Tours ride does exit into a gift shop, a pretty cool gift shop, actually. That's Tatooine Traders. And then, of course, when you finish up with the frozen area, there is a little kind of like outdoor frozen little shopping center there, but that's it for Echo Lake. Next thing up here is Commissary Lane. Now Commissary Lane isn't completing that circle like we were doing. It's actually kind of in the center of the circle, uh, directly behind uh, the Frozen sing-along show. So no big uh, rides here, but they do have a meet and greet with Mick and Min over at Red Carpet dreams and they're going to be dressed in their hollywood best yep so if you want to meet mick and min you're going to go ahead and do that at red carpet dreams uh, right behind uh, the frozen show uh, they got some big dining here at commissary lane uh, two of my favorites actually so first we've got sci-fi dine in theater now this is kind of your americana classic eats here but it is a table service restaurants so you do want those reservations now the cool thing about sci-fi is you're eating in vintage like 1950s cars like you're in a drive-in theater right so all the cars are facing you know a, a movie screen and on the screen they're playing like sci-fi like commercials for movies that you may have seen as a kid like the blob absolutely love this restaurant right next to it is abc commissary now this is a quick service location that my family loves why because they have a vegan burger on the menu uh, but they're known for their chicken sandwiches they also have tacos and some mediterranean eats here like a hummus mediterranean salad my mom absolutely loved that so yeah it, it's a nice place to kind of get some fresh uh, californian like vibe eats there over at ABC Commissary. Now we're moving on to the circle, right? So it's like we had passed Echo Lake. If we were to keep going up that circle, we're gonna hit Grand Avenue. Grand Avenue is known for Muppets 3D Vision. Absolutely love Muppets 3D. You do get 3D glasses. It is 100% silly, fun. It's the Muppets, right? You can't not do the show. It's kind of classic, um, but 
it is a time killer it is great if you need air conditioning or you know it's raining out but it's family friendly kid friendly it's for everybody it's the muppets right uh, but the things here to note here for grand avenue are some eateries right so we got pizza rizzo yep i said it pizza lots of different types of pizza um, including meatball subs now this is a quick service restaurant so the pizza isn't glorious but they do have it if you have a picky kiddo who is just searching for pizza you're gonna want pizza rizzo it's right next to muppets 3d vision next up is mama melrose restaurante italiano <laughs> That is just past Pizza Rizzo here. And, th and this is a table service restaurant, so you are going to want those reservations. Uh, but this is pasta, steak, and kind of um, California vibe mixed with Italian, right? We have eaten here a few times. No complaints. Absolutely love uh, Mama Melrose. Next up is going to be the Baseline Tap House. Now, this is beer and brews, California flavored brews, right? And wine. Uh, they do have a cheese platter and a giant Bavarian pretzel, but it's basically a drinking and snacks situation. In fact, it's usually quite hopping over at Baseline every time we pass it by. But that is Grand Avenue. So the next area is one of my favorite areas, if you can't guess, if you know me at all, and that is gonna be Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Now this is in the back left side of the park. So if you're going from the main entrance, beelining directly to a Star Wars, it is a bit of a walk for you, but it's in the very back, just so you know, like the back left is Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And you know you're in Star Wars because they have these transition like tunnels to get you there where obviously the vibe is different and you start getting those Star Warsian feels. Once you are in the Star Wars land, it is all Star Wars. There is no touch of Mickey Mouse or other parts of the park in this area. Once you've entered Galaxy's Edge, you are in Star Wars, essentially almost like in a Star Wars movie. At least that's how I like to think about it. All right, you guys ready? Let's talk about the rides over at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Now, sadly, there's only two of them, but they're amazing two rides, so we're not going to discount that. First, we got Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Now, of course, this is the new ride, the big ride, the ride everyone's willing to wait three to four hours for. Yes, I'm not kidding. Uh, this ride, your kiddo is going to need to be 40 inches tall. Now, this is a long kind of adventurous ride. They do take you to through kind of like three transition areas into the ride, the ride part being the final thing here. The thing you need to know about this ride, it is, it is family friendly. Uh, it is very much fun. It is also a thrill ride. It's a trackless ride system and you're dodging, you know, stormtroopers and such such it is good versus evil it's you know the, the the resistance versus the first order here uh you do need to know that there is a drop now it's a one floor elevator drop you literally just go straight down it's quick it's fast it does get me a little bit but i kind of close my eyes and hold on tight it's just a quick one floor drop most people don't really pay attention to it but me, of course, I'm aware, uh, but that is Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. 100% recommend this ride. Next up is gonna be the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. Now, kiddos need to be 38 inches tall to ride this ride. It is a simulated flight ride. However, it is not like Star Tours. I don't know what it is. The Falcon doesn't make me sick, Star Tours does. Not sure what's going on with that, uh, but it is a simulated flight ride. In fact, if you are Granted, to be the pilot, you actually get to pilot the Falcon. Uh, the rest of us get to be gunners or engineers, pressing buttons or levers or whatever we get to do. But it's totally family fun, you know, great ride. Uh, but just note, due to the motion there, because it is a simulated flight. Uh, next up, of course, we got the Eat. So over here in Star Wars, you can get Star Warsy and popcorn. My daughter absolutely loves this popcorn, has to get it every single trip. Me, not so much. It kind of tastes like a slightly spicy, fruity pebbles popcorn. Not so sure about it, but they do kind of have regular popcorn as well. It's just dyed green, but don't let that mistake you. You know, it is just kind of like a buttered popcorn. Uh, next thing up is gonna be Ronto Roasters. Absolutely love Ronto Roasters. It is so delicious. They do have vegan eats there. Uh, it is a quick service kind of grab and go. There is limited seating, but they do have breakfast. They are known for sausage 
wrap. So they've got breakfast, lunch, and dinner there. Yes, love Ronto Roasters. Then we've got Docking Bay 7 uh, Food and Cargo. Now this is gonna be the bigger restaurant here. This is a quick service, lots of seating. Uh, pretty popular, you can mobile order ahead of time. Now this is where you're gonna get those Star Warsian themed eats, but don't worry about it guys. It's just chicken or beef or vegan noodles. They just come with some fun Star Wars names, which kind of just makes it, you know, you're in, you're in the land. You gotta, you gotta go with the flow here. Um, absolutely love Docking Bay. Next thing up is gonna be Olga's Cantina. Now this is a bar. A Star Wars bar. It is 100% amazing. I love going to the cantina, but parents, it's a bar. It is 100% a bar. I see so many people complaining because they took their whole family and they didn't realize they don't really serve food. There's weird two options of snacks at this location. It's a bar. They have alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks, but again, bar. We took our families, um, yeah, the kiddos had an okay time. Once they got past all the coolness, they did get a little bored after some point, so I had to hand them my phone, but know that going into it. For those of us who are adults, yeah, absolutely love the cantina. Next thing up is the milk stand. Now the milk stand is where you get to try blue or green milk. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. What's your favorite, blue or green? Or are you like my son and you like to mix them? <laughs> a note here about the milks is they are plant-based. So everyone gets to uh, have a try over here at the milk stand. Shopping in Star Wars land is just kind of like nooks and crannies, little shops and carts, you know, throughout the area. So not really worth overly mentioning here. And then of course in the Batuu near the docking bay and Ronto Roasters, area they do have you know a line of merchants in there to get some really cool star wars themed products so just make sure you uh, check out those areas but the bigger things to note here are dock on doors which is where you're going to get those lightsabers not the ones you custom built but the pre-made uh, lightsabers and lightsaber like accessories are going to be over at that place now under shopping they listed two things it isn't really shopping so just kind of know that in advance first thing is savi's workshop now savi's workshop requires reservations 100 percent why? Because this is where you're going to build a custom lightsaber. You get to pick, pick out all the pieces and actually custom build your own lightsaber, picking out your own color of kyber crystal. Um, it is going to cost you $250 for that lightsaber. But note, it is not really a shop. It is a reservations required uh, situation. Absolutely loved building my lightsaber, just so you know. Um, but yeah, make sure you get reservations for Savi's workshop. Now, if you want a droid, you wanna build your own little R2-D2 or BB-8 kind of a droid, you're gonna to wanna to do that at Droid Depot. However, that is also reservations required. Uh, those droids are gonna cost you about $120. Now, inside Droid Depot, there is a little shop around the corner. Where you can get some really cool R2-D2 uh, themed items there, but yeah reservations 100% required to build your own custom saber and to build your own droid. But that is the Star Wars area. Again, it's, there's a lot of nooks and crannies of shopping and, and eating in there, but yeah, absolutely love Star Wars land. Now, if you keep going now, so we're in the back of the park and we're now working our way right, uh, you're gonna hit Toy Story land. Now, this is another really awesome area. It's very well themed. My issue here with Toy Story Land is it gets really busy, really busy, really, really quick to the point where I kind of like to get in and get out. I don't usually linger too long in Toy Story Land. To me, it's a lot like Fantasyland at Magic Kingdom. I want to get in and get out because too many people kind of hang out there. Uh, why do too many people hang out there? Well, I'll tell you why. They have three awesome attractions and two really great places to eat. So let's talk about it. First thing up is Alien Swirling Saucers. Now, kiddos are gonna have to be 32 inches to ride uh, this attraction. It is 100% family friendly. However, there is some light spinning involved. You kind of do some do -si do dancing like with the aliens. Uh, light spinning, all in good fun. I mean, it's aliens, it's Toy Story. Of course, it's exciting. So yeah, that is Alien Swirling Saucers. Next thing up is gonna be Slinky Dog Dash. Kiddos are gonna be 38 inches to ride this ride. It is 100% a coaster, 
a family coaster. Uh, definitely a lot of twists and turns. It's fast, it's thrill. It is considered an introductory coaster. Uh, it's extremely popular, extremely popular. Most people love this. If you like coasters, you're gonna love Slinky Dog Dash. Last ride in this area is Toy Story Mania. Uh, which is gonna require you to have some 3D glasses. Now, Toy Story Mania is a fun shooting game. You're actually in competition with your person next to you and the people in the back of you, which are in your car, and you're shooting to get points, right, uh, to beat your teammate, to be the best in the vehicle. Uh, note here, there is some light spinning because you're sitting there kind of still and you're shooting, and then all of a sudden you kind of move real quick to go to the other side. So just kind of know that in advance. I do sometimes find myself having to kind of just close my eyes when we're in the middle of the spinning, but it's not too terrible. But yeah, those are the three rides or attractions in Toy Story Land. Next up, we got some eats. Now the first one is brand new, brand spanking new. In fact, I have a whole video and review on it already. It is Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. Now, if this is a table service restaurant, so it is gonna require reservations, but the only thing you need to know about it, barbecue. If you don't like barbecue, you're not gonna like this restaurant. Everything is served family style, so they bring all the barbecue to your table and everyone just grabs and eats whatever they want. It is a lot of food. It is a little pricey, it's a lot of food. So make sure you go to this restaurant starving, basically, and then just stuff yourself full of some yummy barbecue. Next thing is Woody's Lunchbox. Now this has been around for a while because it's a really awesome location with some good eats. It is a quick service. Dining is outside and the seats can be hard to get because people tend to sit there and they linger for a while. So just note that if you're going to Woody's Lunchbox, you kind of got to you gotta hunt down a table to eat at. Uh, but they've got br breakfast there, which is something to note. Not a lot of places serve breakfast, but they're known for like their grilled cheese and other various sandwiches and tachos. Yep, potato tots mixed with nachos. That's all I'm gonna say, so delicious. Now, not a lot of shopping here. In fact, the shopping is basically while you exit the Toy Story Mania ride, you're gonna to go to Jesse's Trading Post. This is a new shopping location, but it is a ride, you know, exit store. Everything Toy Story, that's where you're gonna get it is Jesse's Trading Post. Now, if we keep going, so we've exited Toy Story Land and we're getting closer, closer to getting back to that entrance where we started, we're gonna hit the animation courtyard. Now, this area is known for character, meet and greets so many character meet and greets make sure you check out my most recent hollywood studios video i stood in that area for five minutes and i could not believe how many characters i saw walking by greeting guests it was absolutely amazing star wars characters disney junior characters yeah vampirina fancy nancy yep we've got pixar i saw the incredibles i saw edna mode and sully and more, lots of characters to meet and greet over in the animation courtyard, but let's talk about the rides and attractions in that area. First thing we got, Walt Disney Presents. Now this is kind of a little nook in the corner type situation. You're gonna walk through the doors and you're basically gonna explore Walt's life through artifacts and models and some really great things. I mean, I remember watching uh, Walt on TV and he would show this awesome model of the Disneyland theme park or this awesome model of something else. Well, they have those models actually out for people to see under glass over inside Walt Disney Presents. And of course, the whole thing ends with a movie about Walt's life, One Man's Dream. It's only a 15 minute movie, but man, I cried. I, I did, I had tears when I watched it. Um, you can also meet Sully from Monsters in this area. So just note that it's kind of just a walk through area of some really cool models and artifacts of Disney World, Disneyland, things that they're building now, things that they used to build. It's just kind of a fun, reminiscent ride through Walt's life. Absolutely love a Walt Disney Presents. Next thing up is Star Wars Launch Bay. Now, this has been around for a while since pre-COVID. I do have to honestly say, it's changed. It's not like it used to be for those of you who did it uh, previously. They do have some displays out there, you know, Star Wars displays of costumes and models and concept art like they did before. 
but not as much. It's mostly just a place for you to meet characters. Like they have an, a waiting area to meet Chewie, a waiting area to meet Darth Vader, a waiting area to meet BB-8. Check your app, that'll give you more details. But that's basically what's inside Star Wars Launch Bay. And then we have the Disney Junior Play and Dance. Yeah, it is what that says. You're gonna dance and play with Disney Junior. So Disney Junior's up on stage, a lot of singing and activity going on, kids jumping all around all over the place, dancing to the music. Yeah, kids, 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 family friendly, air conditioning, time killer, whatever you wanna call it. If you have little kids who love Disney Junior, this is the place to be. Now the eateries noted here is the market, not really fancy named. Uh, this is by the Pixar area, and this is where you're gonna get those Jack Jack Num Num cookies, which is basically a big chocolate chip cookie. Then they have a Geoffrey's cart, yep, code coffee. So you've got coffee and chocolate chip cookies over by the Pixar area. It's just as you exit Toy Story, you pass a little Pixar area, and then you keep going into the animation courtyard. So if we keep going that full circle, right, we're getting closer to the entrance. Uh, we're gonna hit Sunset Boulevard, and this is actually the final area inside Hollywood Studios. Now, they have quite a few attractions in here to talk about. So basically the ones I haven't mentioned yet, yep, they're in Sunset Boulevard. We've got the Rockin' Roller Coaster featuring Aerosmith. There, there's some debate there if that's changing. Uh, that's gonna require kiddos to be 48 inches tall. Now this is currently closed because it's getting renovated. But just note, so that you can plan on it if you're traveling you know, to Disney World in the future here, it is a coaster. This is the big kahuna coaster here. This is the, the big thrill seeker is this ride. Coaster drops, thrill and fast. Not exactly family friendly unless you like yourself a crazy coaster. But yeah, that is gonna be rock and roller coaster. Next thing up is Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. Now this is great. Kids, kids, kids. Air conditioning, time killer. It's a little animatronic show featuring Lightning McQueen and to Toe Mater. If your kiddos love cars, yeah, this is the place to be over at Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. Then we have the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Oh my goodness. So your kids need to be 40 inches to ride this ride. Yeah, thrill, drops, big drops, elevator straight down drops. Could be a little scary. Yeah, this is a very popular ride. Uh, so if you like thrill and you don't mind dropping straight down like an elevator just falling down, yeah. <laughs> That is the ride for you. Next up, of course, is Fantasmic. Now, Fantasmic isn't a ride. It's more of a, an attraction, maybe. Uh, it is an evening fireworks show. Absolutely love Fantasmic. You know, the fight of good versus evil, Mickey Mouse versus the villains. Absolutely love this show. I will give you a note. I prefer to see this show closer to the front. The closer I am is better viewing of the characters that are gonna be featured in the show. I do like to sit kind of more center uh, so I can get better views of those characters. So arriving early can be beneficial to you. Just know that in advance. Next up is the Beauty and the Beast live on stage show. Yes, so that's what it is. It's Beauty and the Beast performing live on a stage show for you. It is a 25 minute show. Um, Gosh, I don't wanna anger anybody. I'm not a huge fan of this show. I love absolutely all the shows at Disney World except for the Beauty and the Beast show. Who hates me now? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. I don't know why I'm not a fan of this show, but it is a retelling of the Beauty and the Beast story. You know, Belle, Beast, and you know, Mrs. Potts and, and everything. Um, is in this show. If you like Beauty and the Beast, yeah, you'll like this show, but make sure you arrive early because they do have some seating in the very back that's not covered. So if you're in the heat, heat of Florida, you're gonna get some sun beaming on your head. So arrive a little early so you can get seated a little closer up front. But that's it for rides and attractions over on Sunset Boulevard. We do have some eats here. Now, the strip kind of across from Beauty and the Beast and across from Fantasmic just has a bunch of little things, boom, 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 all in a row and it's known as Sunset Ranch Market. Now I'm just gonna pop up the things here, but basically it's the home to several markets of various eats. So we're gonna talk produce, yeah, you want some fruits, uh, burgers, 
ice cream, pizza, drinks, adult drinks. They even have a place that serves breakfast. You looking for Mickey waffles? Yep, that's the place to go. You're gonna wanna eat at the Sunset Ranch Market. They also have KRNR, the rock station. That's just a snack stand, you know, chips just outside of Rock and Roller Coaster. And then of course, yep, a Geoffrey's coffee. Yep, ding, 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 more coffee to keep you parents awake over at Sunset Boulevard. Now the last thing of course to mention here is shopping. Now similar to the front of the park on Hollywood Boulevard, Sunset Boulevard has the same kind of thing. It's a bunch of shops that all connect and you can kind of just boom, 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 walk through them all. Uh, one is definitely uh, souvenirs and pins and trinkets and general items. That's gonna be the Sunset Ranch pins and souvenirs. And then we've got Once Upon a Time, that's gonna be apparel, you know, mouse ears. Then we've got Legends of Hollywood. This one's gonna be a little bit more fancy for you. It is sponsored by Pandora. So if you're looking for some fun jewelry, that's where you wanna go. And then we've got the Beverly uh, Sunset Boutique. Again, they're all kind of connected. You just walk through them and you've done all your shopping. But yeah, that's Hollywood Studios for you guys. This is the perfect park if you love thrill if you love coasters and on the other side of things if you love star wars or toy story now i know i mentioned a lot of things that were coasters but my kiddos absolutely love this park and i could and i could spend hours in toy story and star wars land alone so absolutely love this park if you are looking for actual footage of the rides make sure you check out my hollywood studio videos where you can watch me and or my family complete uh, at Hollywood Studios, riding all the rides and eating all the eats. But that's it for you guys. That is Hollywood Studios. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments. I'm trying to help you guys out. So I thought maybe giving you the information you need of exactly what's in the park was going to be helpful. Getting park maps can be difficult. They only have them at the theme parks and the Disney resorts. So if you're planning from home without looking at the app and scrolling through, it's hard to figure out what exactly is in each of these parks. So I hope these videos helped you out. Um, as always, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. If the subscribe button is red, please click it, turn it gray, hit the bell icon for notifications, like this video, and like I said, comment. I only have one more to go, Animal Kingdom, but how are these going so far? Um, Sadly, YouTube is being a stinker and they're not sharing my videos. So I'm not getting a lot of viewerships on these videos, which makes me a little sad because they are so much work. So anyway, you guys can help me out. I really do appreciate it. Sharing my videos, uh, talking to friends and family about my videos is the best way to show me some support. So I have the ability to make more videos for you guys. But as always, mahalo for watching. Nina out. Bye guys. Oh,